so uh, starting with some important updates uh, today we are going to discuss uh, some important variants of the national product aggregates you are aware uh, of uh, the gdp uh, at market price gnp at market price nnp at market price ndp at market price then gdp at factor cost gdp gnp at factor cost net national product at factor cost ndp at factor cost then factor income from net domestic product uh, accruing to private sector private income personal income so these are the important variants of the national product aggregates and which are very important for the subject because here uh, there are there is a lot of scope for many cases to be uh, cases that can come for your examination on these basis now talking about the basic concepts friends what is the basic difference between domestic and national when we talk about domestic it is only within the uh, within the territory of the country that is the domestic territory of the country whatever income is generated in the within the premises within the country that is called as domestic income and how do we gen, uh, find out domestic income given the national income we deduct the net factor income from abroad and we determine the domestic income the other way around is if we uh, if in the examination we have domestic income given to us then we can find out the national income by adding the net factor income from abroad market price and factor cost what is the basic difference between these two prices so when we talk about market price the only difference is that we are going to add net indirect taxes from the in the factor cost and when factor cost is to be determined we are going to deduct the net interest uh, indirect taxes from the market prices now what is the basic difference between gross and net when we talk about gross product it is nothing but adding depreciation to the net product and the other way around is net product when we have to determine we are going to deduct depreciation from the gross product so these are the basic concepts which we need to keep in mind before uh, finding out uh, determining any of the vari variants which are required for the national product now as we all are aware what is gdp gdp is the money value of all the goods and services that are produced within the domestic territory of a country during a certain period and usually we take it as a one financial year now what is ndp friends as we said gross and net the only difference between the two variants is depreciation so when we talk about gdp we are going to add depreciation to ndp and if i have to determine ndp then i'm going to deduct depreciation from my gdp so when a depreciation on any fixed capital used in the production of the goods and services is deducted from the gdp we get the ndp now what is gross national product as i said earlier domestic and national the only difference is the nfia that is the net factor income from abroad so if i have to determine the uh, gnp that is gross national product i am going to add the net factor income from abroad to my gdp what is net national product national uh, net gross and net the only difference is depreciation part so we are going to deduct depreciation from the gnp to determine the nnp now what is your personal income there are two variants one is personal income and is private income now what is personal income friends it is the income which is actually received by the individuals or households in a country during one accounting year but undistributed profits of the enterprises and taxes are deducted from the private income as they are not distributed so any undistributed profits uh, which the which the business is going to retain which the enterprise is going to retain any taxes they have paid they all are going to be excluded while determining your personal income so if i have to determine my personal income given the private income i am going to deduct my undistributed profits my corporate profits retained earnings of foreign companies and taxes so these incomes are going to be or these variants are going to be deducted from your private income to determine your personal income and what is your private income it comprises of the national total national income which is out of the national income i am going to uh, remove the income from property entrepreneurship commercial and administrative enterprises savings on non departmental enterprise of the government interest on national debt net current transfers from the government plus current transfers from abroad so all these are going to be deducted from your national income 
to determine your private income. Now, what is what do you mean by personal disposable income? That is the portion of income from personal income that is available for individuals for actual consumption. So, whatever uh, as we have uh, earlier uh, mentioned about the personal income, in that there are two variants. One is personal disposable and non-disposable income. So, personal disposable income is something which I have in hand for actual consumption. So, personal income minus your taxes, minus direct taxes, minus any fines, fees, or receipts of the government. After deducting all these uh, uh, all these items, whatever is is residual, whatever is left is called as personal disposable income, which is available for my actual consumption. Now, what do you mean by real income? Real income is it takes into account your your inflation, right? National income expressed in terms of general level of prices. What is real NNP? NNP for the current year into base year index uh, divided by the current year index. So here what we do is we take into account the inflation. Inflation part is also taken into account to find out your real NNP. Now what do you understand by operating surplus? That is rent interest plus profit plus dividend and other similar incomes are called as operating surplus. What is mixed income? That is labor income plus property income. That is called as mixed income. Net indirect taxes is indirect taxes plus subsidies. So these variants we need to keep in mind because these are going to be helpful for us to, to uh, solve the problems. Now, as we all are aware that there are three approaches for measuring your national income. One is value added approach, which measures the GDP as a sum of value added at each stage of production from the initial to final stage. So whatever value addition is going to happen to the production, to the products that are produced in every stage when there is going to be a value addition that that uh, all the uh, value added approach is uh, taken into account to measure the GDP. The For uh, measuring your GDP under income approach, what we do is that is nothing but the income which is generated uh, out of your <coughs> from the various income uh, factors of production that is wages, rent, interest, and profit. Expenditure approach measures the GDP as a sum of expenditures on final goods and services. So there are three approaches through which I can measure the national income. Now, starting with the value added approach, it measures the value added by each producing enterprise in the production process in the domestic territory of a country on an accounting year. So whatever uh, determination we do for the national income it is done for a particular period that is one financial year in other words value added is defined as a difference between total value of output of a firm and value of inputs brought from other firms so it is the difference between the output and the input now let us take one sum on this so if I have to calculate the net value added at factor cost from the following data now we have purchase of materials, depreciation, sales, excise tax, opening stock, intermediate consumption, and closing stock. So given is the is the data, and on this base on the basis of this data, I have to calculate my net value added at factor cost. So how do we determine it? For the firstly, for finding out the net value uh, added, I have to find out the gross value added. So what the gross value added at market price will be? it will be sales plus change in stock minus intermediate consumption so sales is given to me as 200 intermediate consumption is 48 and what is the change in this stock that is opening minus closing so that is 15 and 10 so the difference between the two is going to be taken uh, as change in stock and then out of that i'm also going to reduce intermediate consumption so what is my gross value added that is the difference between the sales plus change in stock minus intermediate consumption that comes to 147 crores. Now, as we have already said that from gross, if I have to find out, the, I have to calculate the net value added at market price, then I have to deduct the depreciation. So what is the depreciation given to me in the sum? The depreciation is 12 crores, right? So that is going to be reduced. So 147 minus 12, 135 crores is my net value added at market price. But now they have told me to determine or to calculate the net value added at factor cost. So when I have to do it at factor cost, what we do is, as we have earlier mentioned, we <coughs> deduct the net indirect taxes from your 
uh, net value added from market price. So 135 crores is what is my net value added at market price. Out of that, I'm going to deduct the indirect taxes, which is given to me in the sum as 20. So and that will give you your answer. That is net value added at factor cost is going to be 115 crores. So that is how we calculate friends this is very important we need to understand that how to determine your gross value added and net value added both at factor cost and market price right so when i talk about market prices it has depreciation and when we talk about market price and factor cost the difference is the indirect tax so this thing you always need to keep in mind now coming to the next question given the following data we have to find out the gross value added at factor cost previously we did it as net value added at factor cost so it is again the same here also what we are going to do is value of output minus intermediate consumption that is whatever is my sales plus change in stock right that is minus intermediate consumption so change in stock is again 10 minus 15 that is minus 5 and minus 50 that is intermediate consumption is uh, uh, is uh, is 50 so that is also taken into account so it will give it will give you your sales is of 100 so 100 minus 55 your gross value added at fact market price is 45 crores and now to find out the factor cost what we do is we take into account minor indirect taxes plus subsidies right the net interest indirect taxes which is which includes indirect taxes plus subsidies so subsidies is given to me in the sum so what will be my gross value added at factor cost whatever is my gross value added at market price minus my indirect taxes that is uh, 10 and subsidies is 2 so i will get my answer as 37 crores so this is again a very important concept which we need to keep in mind now let's say there is another sum which uh, which uh, ask us to calculate the net value added at factor cost so again this is the same uh, repetition actually just uh, another uh, case uh, case to uh, to understand the gross value added at market price then net value added at market price and then we uh, ultimately we find out the net value added at factor cost so this you can you can uh, do it on your own and cross check <clears throat> Now, calculation of national income by income method. Firstly, we did it by value added approach, right? Wherein we found out the gross value added and the net value added at factor cost, both at factor cost and market price that can be determined. Now, the second way is to calculate the national income by income method. Income is what that is generated out of the factors of production, which are the four factors of production, friends. It is, it is land, labor, right, capital, and entrepreneurship. So from land uh, the income that is generated is rent from labor we get wages from um, investments we get interest and from capital we get profits so these are the incomes that are generated out of your factors of production and that approach is called if we are going to use these incomes uh, to calculate your national income we call it as uh, income method right the income method measures national income from the side of payments made to the primary factors of production in the form of rent wages interest and profit for their production services in an accounting year now what are the components of domestic income friends compensation of employees that is this is a reward or compensation paid to the employees for rendering productive services it includes wages and salaries employees contribution to social security schemes then dearness allowance, bonus, city allowance, house rent allowance, leaving, leave traveling allowances. All these are going to be added. So because these are the payments made to the employee, right? And the uh, these payments are all comprised under wages, right? So that they are my domestic income. Now operating surplus, as we have already mentioned, it includes rent, profit and interest. So whatever surplus we get, right? They are all coming under operating surplus. So profit includes corporate tax, dividend, and undistributed profits. Mixed income of self-employed, income of own account workers like farmers, doctors, and barbers, etc., and unincorporated enterprises like small shopkeepers, repairs, shops, retail traders, etc., is known as mixed income. So income which is generated by the self-employed people comes under the category of missed income. So these are there are three important components of under income method. One is domestic income, then operating surplus and mixed income. Okay. So now if I have to calculate the national income by income method given the following data. 
so compensation of employees mixed income of self employed net factor income from abroad is given which is negative then rent profit consumption of fixed capital net indirect taxes interest and operating surplus so now if i have given this data i have to find out the national income by income method now how do we find the gdp at market prices firstly friends that is i as i said earlier there are three important components under income method one is compensation of employees mixed income of self self employed people and the operating surplus and here since it is market price we are going to add depreciation since we are um, uh, and then we are going to add the net indirect taxes <clears throat> so with that we get the given the information we get the gdp at market prices as 3550 now gnp if because out of gdp if i have to find out the gross national product at market prices what we do is we are going to add the net factor because domestic and national the only variant is the nfia so i am going to add nfia but in uh, in this uh, particular sum we have it as negative uh, number so that is going to be deducted so my gnp will be 3500 now to find out the nnp out out of gnp if i have to find out the nnp that is net national product at market prices i am going to reduce the depreciation so depreciation is given to me as uh, 200 so depreciation is going to be uh, deducted and that will give you as uh, your answer as 3300 now market price and factor cost as we have already said the basic difference is the net indirect taxes so in this case the indirect taxes is given to me as 250 that is going to be reduced from your nnp at market prices that will give you your nnp at factor cost so these are important variants which we need to keep in mind for calculating your gdp under the income method now <clears throat> calculation of national income by expenditure method we have spoken about the value added method the income method now we are going to talk about the expenditure method under this method what we do is we find try to find out gross domestic product at market prices during a period of accounting year national income is measured at the point of expenditure previously we took income into account now in this case we are going to take uh, the expenditure for determining your gdp at market prices now how what are the components which are going to be taken into account as private final consumption expenditure government final consumption expenditure gross fixed capital formation net exports domestic capital formation interest on nation, national debt investment expenditure so these are the components which are going to be taken into account under your expenditure method so given the following data if we have to find out the national income by expenditure method how do we solve it so compensation of employees is given to me as 1200 net factor income from abroad is again negative minus 20 net indirect taxes is 120 profit given to me is as 800 private final consumption expenditure is 2000 net domestic capital formation is 770 consumption of fixed capital is 130 that is depreciation rent is 400 interest is 620 mixed income of self employed is 700 next ex net exports is minus 30 again a negative number government final consumption expenditure is 1100 operating surplus is 1820 employees contribution to social security scheme is 300 friends given this particular data i can calculate my national income both by expenditure method and income method also because the data is given for income method also but in this case we are going to determine the national income only by expenditure method as we again to brush up we know that the components under expenditure method to determine the gdp at market prices is given to me so what all i am going to take into account is i for ex under expenditure method depreciation my private final consumption expenditure net domestic capital formation net exports plus government final consumption expenditure so this will give you your gdp at market price so that comes to 3970 crores and now if i have to find out the N uh, gnp at market prices that is domestic to national i am going to add my net factor income from abroad right and in this case again it is minus then uh, nnp at market prices again from gnp to nnp depreciation is something which we need to deduct 
so uh, depreciation is given consumption of fixed capital is 130 that is my depreciation now net national product at factor cost will be net national product uh, at market prices minus net indirect taxes which is again given to me in the sum uh, so my net indirect taxes is 120 so i'm going to deduct 120 and my final answer will be net national product at factor cost that will be 3700 crores now coming to some important economic indicators that we always need to keep in mind uh, and uh, which uh, you know i have tried to update it uh, with the recent numbers just to take a uh, uh, gist of all the important economic indicators as we all are uh, aware that indian growth is driven by basically it is driven by domestic demand as opposed to the growth in other major emerging economies especially china where the growth is driven by export demand right so the basic difference is that in our india we the indian growth is ma mainly concentrating towards domestic demand whereas in other emerging economies like china it is based on the export demand so if there is not much of demand coming in from other countries china economy may, may not perform but india yes they have an advantage that there is uh, adequate domestic demand available which helps the industry to grow india's gross domestic product growth at 7.7 percent is what has been uh, has been shown in the quarter four of 2017-18 financial year and it is uh, showing that it is uh, indicating that the indian economy is well on the recovery track the government has shown a significant commitment to fiscal consolidation Gross fiscal deficit of the central government was brought down from 4.1% of the GDP in 2014-15 to 3.9% in 2015-16 and further 3.5% in 2016-17 and remained at 3.5% in 2017-18. So here we can see that the gross fiscal deficit is also, is also not uh, going high but it is at a decent level. It is budgeted to decline 3.3% of GDP in 2018-19. There could be, however, be challenges on the fiscal front unless there is a buoyancy in tax receipts and or a restraint on expenditure. So if we have to curb down on our fiscal deficit, we have to concentrate on more and more of tax receipts and we have to reduce the expenditure. The first three quarters of the financial year 2017-18 has witnessed beyond foreign portfolio investments flows into the capital market with a greater preference for debt. So these are the, some latest current economic indicators which I thought I would like to share it with you. Now looking at the performance, <coughs> GDP performance for the last 10 years from 2012 to 2022, 22 is what we are uh, anticipating on the basis of the trend which has been followed we can see that our gdp growth is going to hover around 7.36 to 8.15 so it is going to be increasing in the coming years that is what it has been anticipated if you look at the uh, gdp growth again it is on the recovery path the uh, in 2016-17 the gdp was at 7.10 and today um, in 2018-19 it has come to around 8.20 in one first quarter of 2018-19 it has shown 8.20 so it is a uh, it is a good sign for our gdp growth the fiscal deficits also have shown a downfall that is the fiscal deficit is very much uh, is in control and uh, from 2014-15 where it was 4.10 now in 2018-19 it has been budgeted to be somewhere at around 3.30 again this is a good sign so these are friends some positive numbers of our indian economy which can help our indian economy to grow and prosper the only concern today as on today which we have is related to our indian uh, rupee um, uh, the currency rate exchange rate of our rupee usd you have seen that from 1st january 2018 to 7th september 2018 what i have tried to capture the de indian rupee has depreciated to a greater extent this is mainly because of the crude oil prices that have risen then coming to uh, another important uh, area where uh, the government is very much concerned is financial inclusion through the pmjdy schemes so the com government has uh, you know seen that uh, 
so uh, what we have seen is the financial inclusion uh, pmjdy accounts in 2015 the number of accounts that were opened was 12.55 crores which has reached uh, to a number of 32.54 crores in on 29th of august 2018 so these are the latest numbers which i have tried to capture this is again showing that we are you know we are performing well as far as uh, financial inclusion is concerned 